It's often said that ships and boats are living things. Whether under sail or power, as they glide through the waters or rise to the waves, they seem to have a life of their own. But whenever and wherever ships and boats are, at sea or in harbour, life is given to them by those who know them. And nowhere is that more true than with many of the craft on the National Register of Historic Vessels managed by National Historic Ships UK. So it's actually about 1,300 historic craft around the UK and uh, they're all very different to the modern boats that you can see here dotted around on the Hamble River. Um, and the reason that they're different is that they have very particular characteristics. So um, a lot of them are operational vessels, um, a lot of them are sailing vessels and um, therefore they have very different types of rig. The people who've got this knowledge are retiring or unfortunately some of them are passing on and the young people coming through just haven't got this experience to sail the vessels in the way that we would like them to be sailed. And so we wanted to put together a programme that would address this. Um, and as we were wondering how best to do this, the Heritage Lottery Fund actually launched its Skills for the Future um, programme for the second time in 2013. And this is a, a programme that's aimed particularly at work-based training for heritage projects. So um, it was perfect timing for us. We had this issue and uh, there was a grants programme um, open. And so National Historic Ships Shipshape Heritage Training Partnership was born, teaming up with partner organisations to teach the skills needed to keep these historic vessels working all through the year, just as they did in their heyday. Skills to give these fine ships the life they need and deserve. I've had the perfect grounding really coming on here and, and learning not just boat handling but all the traditional sailing skills that go with it. Some like we're having a look at this weekend like sailing on and off the anchor, sailing away from you know a port coming on and off, things like that. So you know that, that's been the most valuable to me but within that also the traditional skills that we've learned at um, boat building centres and also the different boats that I've been on within the partnership have also been like you know really influential. And for me, it's been an absolutely amazing year, a year that has been truly unforgettable. There's lots of uh, kind of original and traditional skills, particularly rope work, woodwork, use of traditional materials that perhaps you don't really see in the chandlers anymore, tar and tallow and pitch, and uh, use of these materials is uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, I'm a conservator and uh, that was a good opportunity for me to apply my knowledge in conservation on maritime heritage. So uh, it's an incredible opportunity to sail many different old boats and uh, learn traditional skills. That's amazing. All the way from Frisco Bay, John Kanakanaka to Lye. We'll haul away at the break of day. My involvement with the project really has been to try and define and distill what exactly is the difference between a traditional sailing skills as opposed to say someone who's working on a you know or even sailing on a very modern type of yacht. So what we're trying to do through this project is re identify what those specific skills are record them so we actually define what they are and therefore use that as a basis for, for learning and teaching and training in the future whereby there's there's a, a proper measurement there's proper focus uh, and also to make sure that we can in the long term also retain these youngsters in this type of industry the, the sailing's been fantastic yeah done lots throughout the year loads of different places throughout throughout europe and it's a great thing to do meet loads of loads of people um, and learn a lot I think it is a fine course and uh, with the partner organisations every, everyone's learning, not just us but also the organisations involved and I think that after this year it will be a better course than it was this year, same as it was a better course this year than it was last year. Experience has shown that existing shipboard training, good though it may be, doesn't cover the specialist needs of operating in an historic environment.
we haven't got hydraulics, we've got everything hydraulic, where you wind a handle or you pull a rope and it's just an amazing piece of kit. So what I love about it is that although you can sail a modern boat in a traditional way, and you can sail a traditional boat in a modern way, how much more value you can obtain by sailing a traditional boat in a traditional way, and you can identify with the origins of it, the culture, and the whole thing that made it so special. Leaving the angling boat nicely to starboard so we don't catch his fish. I want the trainees with the Ship Shape Heritage Training Partnership to take away the belief that it's still possible to operate these vessels in pretty much the same way they were designed to be run. And that means they're not theme parks, they're real. The Shipshape Heritage Training Partnership lives up to its name, with partners all round Britain, from the Scottish Fisheries Museum in Anstruther, to the Excelsior Trust in Lowestoft on the Suffolk coast, west to Brixham's Trinity Sailing Foundation in Devon, to classic sailing waters with Dauncey School Sailing Club on the Solent, and on the east coast in Malden, home of the Sea Change Sailing Trust. All partners offer trainees placements within the 12-month programme to hone and develop their skills, which go further with a specialist course in historic vessel maintenance at the International Boat Building Training College in Lowestoft. Okay, guys, what you've got here is a, um, a little double ender. And a conservation placement at the Scottish Fisheries Museum. Trainees are supported financially and pastorally during these residences but have come together here on the group sail, where those skills are put to the test, out on the open sea. And all of this effort and commitment really works. Three of our first year trainees have now found jobs in the maritime heritage sector, like Catherine Holt, very much at home with the team at the historic dockyard Chatham. What the Shipshape Heritage Training Partnership allowed me to do was develop a completely unique set of skills um, that I could put on my CV that would make me stand out as a candidate. Um, I'd just finished a Masters, um, I'd been applying for every sort of heritage job I could, I could find, uh, not really getting anywhere, I wasn't even getting interviews for jobs that I felt I was more than qualified for. Um, and I saw it advertised and I thought, you know what, that's it, that's what I'm missing. Special value of the partnership is the balance between theoretical and practical, putting people through a course that has them working alongside volunteers who have specialist knowledge, getting them working in a museum environment rather than in a sterile classroom environment. They're uh, learning hands-on uh, skills that will long-term benefit them and also the industry and the heritage sector as a whole and preserving specialist subject knowledge for the future. At the end of their year, all our trainees are awarded a training passport, signed off by National Historic Ships UK. This is much more than just proof of what they and the Shipshape Heritage Training Partnership have achieved together. It's a passport for life, for their lives and the lives of the historic ships which they will serve, keeping them afloat and in being, securing the rich heritage that made Britain a great maritime nation around our coast and out across the oceans of the world. Thank you.